Hi, I'm a sweaty William Beckett, and you're watching TV6. Holly here for TV6. I'm sitting down with William Beckett. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Doing pretty well. This is actually take two because I had to quiet the press room. But, <laughs> so thank God he's here. But they listened. They listened. <laughs> All right. So your new album, Genuine and Counterfeit, drops a month from today. Yeah. What can fans expect? Well, um, it's my you know it's my debut solo first album. Full-length. Yeah, it's my first full length record as a solo artist. So um, you know I think that, that the pressure is high, and uh, I I would I wouldn't want to you know. I wouldn't want it any other way. For me, um, making the record was the most natural and most challenging, but most fulfilling in the end. I mean, it's 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 in my opinion, it, it's by far the best you know piece of of music that I've ever made in my life. So uh, I'm I'm really jacked on it, you know. Awesome. And then we heard about the William Beckett Society. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, the William Beckett Society is a really, really cool thing. It's a community of my fans that, um, that you know, we, we do just really cool stuff online. Um, basically, there's, like, exclusive songs that I do for them only, that only they can have. Oh, cool. It's, like, hard copies, right. you know, singles and stuff that I send them. Um, we do, like, chats very frequently as well and um you know other things like meet and greets and you know stuff like that and there's a you know it's a really really great forum and it's a great place for fans to feel comfortable and and you know to be themselves and meet other people who right. are into the same stuff as they are so uh yeah it's been cool but then at the same time like in the, in the chats, I'll talk about sports because I love sports and, like, <laughs> other people don't like sports. But it's just, like, you know, you can just be yourself there, you know. Right, right. And then you've been solo for almost two years now after coming from the Academy as for so long. Um, what – has there been any readjusting to that or, like, do you miss being in a band at all? Or having a um, band behind you on stage? Maybe a little. But, uh, I mean, the plan is to have a band out. Like, like I'll bring a band out Eventually. soon. Yeah. Right. F- you know, f- for the full length but really though I, when I began making music and performing it was in front of you know it was just me and a, you know a bar stool and a guitar in front of you know 12 people or whatever right. in my friend's basement like that's essentially how it started um, so I'm it, um, I'm accustomed to being on stage alone it's, it's not something that something is new. daunting it's not something that is uncomfortable I enjoy it and then since so many people do know you from the academy as you ever get asked to play their like the band songs while you're sure doing I, I, yeah yeah I mean I get that but um, I mean on this tour for instance I've been doing one academy song in the middle of my set just cause I mean I wrote those songs right, right. too so and like they're, <laughs> they're still my songs and uh, and you know I'm I'm not one of those guys that's like you know like I'll never play something from my you know like oh the first album like I hate those songs now so I'm never gonna play them right. anymore like even in the band, we would always play stuff that pleased the crowd. I mean, I haven't written a song as a solo artist. I haven't written a song that I wouldn't be proud to play um, forever. That's that. That's the idea: is to make yeah. songs that you can, uh, you know, always. that are timeless. Right. Uh, for you, anyway. At least for you. Right. Ho- hopefully for others as well. <laughs> yes. And then you played obviously giant amphitheaters, and you've also played small coffee shops. Do you prefer one over the other? It's just different, you know. It's just uh, I, I have no preference. It's just a different venue, and and the show changes, you know, depending on the venue. Like for instance, our last tour, um, the, 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 one of the last tours I did was in Southeast Asia, and um, I headlined uh, in Manila, which is in the Philippines, right? I, um, I headlined like like an arena place oh, wow. as a solo artist. Wow! So That's that was crazy. much much different. I'm sure. <laughs> but at the same time, at, you know, as a solo artist, and plus the, 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 there's also the the language barrier. Yeah. So that's a whole other ball game, but you know, even. When, you know, uh, when my band tour with Kiss, it was a whole like that's a whole new thing too, because I think we played here as well with Kiss, but 
it was, you know, it's, it's just different. Like you have to like, when there's thousands of people and there's like lawn seats and that, and then, you know, it's just like sprawling and you look like this big <laughs> to, to everyone. The, yeah. <laughs> t- you know, uh, and there's like TV monitors and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. You sort of have to just over accentuate moves and, and speak slower. I sort of, um, I sort of parallel it to like a pro wrestler when they speak to like a pro wrestling crowd. Right. You know, it's always really slow. It's like, so how are you doing Chicago? And everyone freaks out. But if you're like, so, so how are you doing Chicago? It's just like, what did he say? You know? Yeah. So there's just, it's like a different approach. I mean, it's just kind of funny. And then since you've been in the business for so long in the industry, what are some good and bad changes you've noticed over the years? Well, I think the changes are just inevitable. I mean, good or bad, they're going to happen either way. So I just try and, uh, you know, keep, I mean, I think that the, that the most important thing is the content, you know, it, it doesn't really, you know, of course I prefer, you know, physical copies and hard copies of, of music. And that's right. like, like, you know, you get to hold it, you get to like read the lyrics, you get to read the liner notes. It's not just on your iPod. And it's like, it's like, you know, a thumbnail of the album cover. Right. Um, but you know, that's the reality of, of a lot of what we're, we're looking at here these days uh that it's it's becoming more digital but um i just adapt to it i mean uh, it's really adapt or die when yeah. it comes down to yeah. it and i don't think that anything's bad about it M- you know getting music out there to people and um having as many chances as possible to to like change someone's life or make their day better you know with your music is that's really all i care about so i don't really care about what what medium it's going through yeah and then um, kickstarter has been kind of a big thing lately with sure. musicians and do you have like of any views on programs like such as that and i know there's a few others out there that are similar i think the kickstarter in theory is a really really great idea um i think that that um there have been some instances particularly recently where it's been exploited and i feel like in a lot of ways it's taking you know it's like kind of taking your fans for a ride a little bit um but I mean, if you're unsigned or if you're, like, trying to make a film or something and, and you're, you're trying to raise funds for, you know, that you, like, don't have any funds, you have right. no backing, like, if you're an independent artist, but bands with labels that do, that, that do, do you know, that do yeah. the Kickstarters, I, I think that that's complete, um, I just think that that's a misuse of the, you know, of the platform, and I don't agree with that. All right, and then to finish off, after your Australian tour with Amberlynn, do you have anything else planned, any tours or anything? Yeah, right now we're, we're um, in the midst of... Uh, confirming a fall U.S. tour, which I can't really divulge more about it until it's confirmed. But, um, yeah, I'll be touring in the States in the fall after I get back from Australia. Awesome. Thank you so much for sitting down. Yeah, thanks for having me. No problem.